Hey, so I asked you guys on Twitter, what would be the next game that we should look at the regional differences for? And someone said Super Mario Sunshine. I thought Super Mario Sunshine, that can't possibly have that many differences. Well, just to make sure, I did a quick reference to The Cutting Room Floor, a fantastic website, and I was shocked. You know what's the section you have to check out first? Like the most insane section of them all? Believe it or not, it's the differences in sound. Yeah, there's a few sound effect differences, and we'll get to that. But first, you gotta hear full-on dialogue that was just stripped out of the US version. Here. Take a listen. <laughs> Did you hear that? Here, I'll bump up the audio for you. Looks like a giant tentacle. Pretty sure he's saying it looks like a giant tentacle, which really doesn't make sense in the context of a giant pile of goo. And yeah, over on the US side, this is how it plays out. Here's another full part of dialogue that gets played in the Japanese version. Uh, excuse me, but... Huh? I am most cons Gonna enhance the audio for you here so you can hear it as best you can. I imagine you'll be spending a fair amount of time at the princess's side. Hmm, look like a Mario's gonna have to find a job. Trying to start a new career at- And here's the US version. And I think even the original intention of the Japanese version was to mute it down quite a bit so that it sounded like it was muffled to the Japanese player. It's pretty clear that they wanted to get rid of it for some strong reason. Now this next one makes a ton of sense. In the Japanese version, the voice actor for the lawyer actually gets his lines wrong. Every time the word shine is mentioned, the actor accidentally says shrine. Expert shrine scholars have determined that this dark, the shrine sprites have vanished from their gathering spot at the shrine gate. And I'm assuming that the voice director for this game was probably Japanese and it slipped through. Because when you listen to the US audio, it's fixed. And when you hear them back to back like this, it's very obvious that the actor had to completely redo the lines. As you can hear subtle inflections that are a little different between the two different takes. Expert shine scholars have determined that this, the shine sprites, have vanished from their gathering spot at the shine gate. The shrine sprites have vanished from their gathering spot at the shrine gate. And next up is the cannon to pin a park. Assuming this is just a glitch of some kind, but in the Japanese version, Mario screams before he even gets shot out of the cannon. And it does seem a lot more appropriate in the US version where he does scream as he's being shot out. Also, for some reason, the sound effect for picking up any flood upgrades is different between the two versions. Here's the Japanese version. And here's the US version. And here's one more for the sound category. Whenever Shadow Mario steals Flood, the sound effect for him snatching the Flood is different between the two versions. Here in the US version, it has more of a chunkier feel to it. Whereas in the Japanese version, it's a little more wimpy. Which maybe for the sake of making it feel a little less uncanny, they decided to give the sound effect a little more weight. And now I want to get into the physical side of things when it came to Super Mario Sunshine and see what sort of merch they had for it over in Japan. Surprisingly, at least what's existing out on the resale market, the amount of things related to Super Mario Sunshine is kind of thin. I was able to find a manga, which is pretty interesting, as well as a digital watch, which is really cool looking. And by the way, the website I'm using here to check out all this merchandise is today's sponsor, Bai. If you're ever looking for exclusive Japanese merch, Bai is a service that will convert your US dollars into yen and also ship any auction that you win internationally something that the original seller of these auctions will not do for you. And if that's something you're interested in trying out, I have an exclusive link in the video description and the top comment where you can use 2,000 yen on your first purchase. Thank you, bye. And now, let's move on to the box differences. All right, the physical boxes. It's gonna be a short segment this time. A lot of what's in the manuals are nearly identical. So let's just sort of flash fire through all the big differences here. Aside from the obvious being the sizes and the format because of the two different regions, the discs are slightly different with the cloud being white in the Japanese version and CD reflective in the US version. And the Japanese version is all clouds while the US version uses a black background to show off all the information. The lines on the white part of the cover have a shining effect in the Japanese version, but it's just a print in the US version. 
And both versions have toads on the back, but only the Japanese version has a map of Delfino Island. Anyways, let's move on to environmental differences. This one should be a lot of fun. In the US version, they added a lot more fruit all over the island. And so in things like the fountains, decks, and wherever else, you can find a nice good variety of fruits. I guess this is because in the Japanese version, it might have been very confusing to younger players having to go a couple blocks over to find any fruits at all. In fact, I may not be a small child, but just trying to find the fruits on my go around caused me to visit an island that's way too far away from the Yoshis. And I would constantly lose the fruit that I was trying to carry back to get my Yoshi, not realizing it was a lot closer than that. So <laughs> good decision on the localizers, I will say. Also, this one is super interesting. The signboards in the two different regions are completely different. Over in the US, we have a series of symbols that cannot be deciphered in any way. It's just artwork. However, in Japan, English words. And if it weren't for the cutting room floor, I would have never known what the heck this was supposed to say. So again, big thank you to them. Anyways, what it ended up being was an example sentence from a dictionary. And it says, this isn't gonna hurt a bit, just a little stick. Ready? One, two, three. There you go, all done. First thing you see when you boot up the game is the Nintendo logo. For the US, it's that iconic red color, and apparently in Japan, it's this iconic blue color for them. Immediately following that, Japan had it say Super Mario Sunshine and then Nintendo Presents underneath, and for it to read out a little more normally for us, it's just completely flipped, where it says Nintendo Presents Super Mario Sunshine. And then in the opening cutscene, they changed the name from Dolphic Island in Japan to Isle Delfino, and so all of the artwork that was made Dolphic Island had to be remade to say Isle Delfino creating almost like an alternate universe for people in the US. And what's really funny is that, yeah, it says Isle Delfino on the map as well, but oddly enough, they took it even further than that. There's a little bit of tourist text in two of the corners of the map, and both of them say something completely different in English between the two versions. In Japanese, it says, Welcome to Dolphic Island, the last resort of this century, and the southern paradise filled with the glittering sunshine, limpid ocean, fresh green mountains, and more. Dolphic Tourist Association is proud to present you a romantic vacation. Feel free to contact us. Whereas in the US it says, Welcome to Isle Delfino, the glittering jewel of the southern seas. The sun is always shining here, so come and visit. Picturesque bays, rolling hills, quaint villages, and more await you. Contact Delfino Tours and plan your vacation today. I'm gonna guess that this was changed because I guess the original Japanese version had sort of maybe implied that Mario and Princess were on a romantic vacation together, whereas in the US they seem to scrub that out. Another interesting thing is that both the US and the Japanese version use special symbols to represent the controller buttons that it would ask you to press to accomplish certain things in the game. And for the US localization, they decided to make the buttons look more accurate towards how they would look on your GameCube controller. Also, the options menu at the start screen has an extra option in the US version and also moves the GameCube controller over to the left instead of having it over onto the right like it does in the Japanese version. And there's even more changes in the European version, which includes a set of languages Languages. And then this is pretty crazy. A lot of the areas that you go to in the game have some stuff that resembles portals and they have sort of like a window into the area that you're about to go into. And for some reason, the Japanese version had the little FMV that would play for it changed for the US version for three of the locations. One of these makes sense because if you look very closely for at least the first level, you can see an object in this FMV that did not make it into the final game. And so for the US version, it seems that they used the final assets of the game to redo all these little FMVs. MVs that play. All right, let's talk about things that changed that were English words between both the Japanese version and the US version. To start with, we got the episodes versus the stories. Yeah, if you select a shine sprite in the Japanese version, it's known as a story. However, over in the US, they call it episodes. And at the very bottom of the same screen, the Japanese version says my score, whereas the US version just says score. You also may notice that the name of the area is different between the two versions. That's the case for three different areas in this game. Gelato Beach in the US is known as Mama Beach, Pianta Village is known as Monte Village, and Noki Bay is known as Mare Bay. And when you're just about to lose your Yoshi, the two versions say something completely different. They both say juice at first, but once it's down to the bottom, the US version says fruit, whereas the Japanese version says hungry, which is so bizarre. You would think that they would keep that, as it seems to illustrate a lot better what the Yoshi needs than just saying fruit. Then if you lose a round, it says too bad in the US version and miss in the Japanese version. And when you collect a shine sprite in the US, it says shine, whereas in Japan, it originally said shine get. 
And now on the translation side of things, we got our friend Quentin back from the Legend of Zelda 1 episode that I did. And out of all the things that I sent over to Quentin, the best stuff that I found was this police officer that says, get going, clean up Bianco Square and make it snappy. I swear, graffiti artists make me so mad. But in Japan, the police officer is actually a lot nicer, saying, you carry the perfect tool for cleaning. Pew pew! And get rid of it with that. And then funny enough, in the first level that you go to, this Pianta just before PD Piranha has the script flipped. The one in the US is nice and the one in Japan is not. For the US, he says, could you help out with the big headed creature up there? You're the only one we can ask to lend us a hand. I know it's a pain, but do you think you could handle it? Whereas in Japan, it says, could you help with the big headed guy up there? You're the only one we can ask. You're so undependable, I'm worried. Are you okay? And then there's the episode titles. There's many that are different, but I just wanted to give you one example where it clearly has English words in the Japanese version. It says, go, go, and then something in Japanese. So when translated, it says, go, go, squid surfing. And obviously, way different than the US's blooper surfing safari. And then lastly, I want to take it all the way back to the beginning. Let's talk about the title screen. In the US, it's very unique in that it has press and start on opposite ends of the logo. There's also a little sun to represent the O in Mario, something that the Japanese version does not have. The Japanese version has its press start on the bottom of the logo and it also says Super Mario Sunshine in English just below Super Mario Sunshine in Japanese and this is also where we'll talk about the European version that also has its own unique logo Super Mario is in big letters Sunshine is in small letters and the shine sprite is next to Sunshine instead of hanging above the S of Sunshine it also shares the same press start with the Japanese version if you're new feel free to hit subscribe if you've been here a long time and you want to support the channel in ways other than checking out Bai, there's a Patreon down below. Everything that you donate would be just reinvested into the show, like buying the physical copies of games. <laughs> and heck, who knows? Maybe one day I'll do a region break on the Super Nintendo world. Not likely, though. <laughs> that would be cool, though. All right. Well, anyways, take care, guys.